Danny Glassman, and in this short podcast, I will be exploring one concept that can help you with the goodness, trustworthiness, and rigor in the qualitative data collection and analysis processes. And I'll begin by defining and explaining for you exactly what triangulation is. I'll follow that by a discussion of the different types of triangulation that exist. And then I will address some issues and opportunities that exist for using triangulation. And finally, I'll offer some examples of using triangulation in qualitative research. Like Robin Williams says in the movie Dead Poet Society from 1989, he says, do not let your perspective narrow. Always find a way to see situations and life from a different angle. This quote could easily be a citation advocating for triangulation, as this is its main rationale. Metaphorically, the term triangulation calls to mind the world's strongest geometric shape. That, of course, is the triangle. More specifically, however, the term triangulation is taken from land surveying. Knowing a single landmark only locates you somewhere along a line in a direction from that specific landmark. Whereas having two landmarks, and of course your own position being the third point of that triangle, you can then take bearings in two directions and locate yourself at their intersection. This is also known as multi-method. According to Dezen, the logic of triangulation is based on the premise that no single method ever adequately solves the problem of rival causal factors, because each method reveals different aspects of empirical reality. Therefore, multiple methods of observations must be employed. Shu also defines triangulation as using multiple sorts of data, data collection methods, or both, and of course, multiple investigators to collect that data. But put more simply, Triangulation refers to the use of more than one approach to the investigation of a research question in order to enhance confidence in the ensuing findings. All right, so now we know what triangulation is, but you might be asking yourself, are there different types or forms of triangulation? And yes, there are. Dezen has identified four basic forms of triangulation. Data triangulation, which is the use of a variety of data sources in a study. Investigator triangulation, which is the use of several different researchers or evaluators. There's theory triangulation, which uses multiple perspectives to interpret a single set of data. And four, there is methodological triangulation, which is the use of multiple methods to study a single problem, or a program. In addition, there's also environmental triangulation, which can also be used in qualitative research, which is employing different environmental locations in a research study. When looking at different methods of qualitative research, it's always important to evaluate those methods. And so I'm going to now speak a little bit about how we evaluate triangulation. Some advantages um, or opportunities or support for using triangulation include increasing confidence in your research data, creating innovative ways of understanding a phenomenon from different and varying perspectives. Um, it can also, by using triangulation, reveal some unique findings that might not be um, evident or present by just using one method. It also can challenge and integrate different theories by um, using methodological um, triangulation. And it can also provide a clearer understanding of that problem by offering so many different perspectives. On the flip side of that, there's also some disadvantages and some criticisms of using triangulation in qualitative research. One of the largest critiques of triangulation is that it applies realism to qualitative research. That is, um, that there's only one truth and that by using multiple methods, you're increasing the ability to come to that one truth. And some different theories um, or approaches to qualitative research would argue against that. Um, another critique is that um, triangulation assumes that um, different sets of data are all equivalent in their comparison, meaning that if using observation data as well as interview data, that those are of the same quality um, 
and should be weighted the same. Another critique is that it's time consuming. By using multiple methods, it takes more time. Um, by using quantitative and qualitative research in one study, um, it does increase the amount of work as well as um, both on the front end by collecting it, but also on the back end by analyzing it. So it's, it can be more time consuming. And lastly, um, some other disadvantages include the possibility of disharmony based on investigator biases. So using different investigators um, could create um, um, different disagreements between those investigators. So what does triangulation look like in practice? Well, for me, in my own dissertation study, I used data triangulation in the form of interviews and photographs, as well as theoretical triangulation by using a constructivist framework with queer theory, and I used environmental triangulation by looking at small, large, and private public universities. I did this in order to strengthen the study by applying multiple methods of data collection, theories, and environments. If you would like to explore this concept more fully, I encourage you to please refer to the references at the end of this podcast for further reading on triangulation and qualitative research. I want to thank you so much for viewing this podcast and best of luck using triangulation in your own research.